What's up guys, Game Feed, Feed of All Games here, and I'm bringing you another Drama Script of Saturdays with me, Game Feed. Let's start off with Raw, as I usually do. I usually go Raw, Impact, and SmackDown. It's kind of odd that I go to WWE, then TNA, and back to WWE. Raw really didn't stand out to me this much. Nothing outstanding really happened. It looks like the writers are kind of getting lazy, or they don't know... Uh, which direction to take places or they don't they don't know whether they should leave things at they are and let it build slowly or they should change something dramatically but it looks like change is coming what I mean by that is the whole main storyline of Raw the John Laranitis and the CM Punk Basically, at the beginning of the match, I mean, the beginning of the show, there was a promo between the two, and it was supposed to be a match at later on the night. It would be John Laronitis versus CM Punk. But due to John Laronitis getting a letter from WWE headquarters, from the board of directors, saying that his, that his evaluation is going to be given to him by Triple H, and if Triple H doesn't like it, Triple H has the right to quote unquote fire him. So that's re and that's right the reason why he didn't have the match. I don't know where they're going with this. So basically, it forces John Laronitis not to screw CM Punk on Sunday's pay per view. Who's to say what's gonna happen? But other notes on Raw: the thing with Zack Ryder, Kane, and John Cena. The false count anywhere match ended in a no contest because Kane beat the hell out of Zack and choke slammed him through the stage and has a story of a broken back now. I don't know where they're going with this. It looks like they're probably just gonna repackage Ryder and thus give Ryder a small vacation because he has been working his ass off the past year and a half. So he gets a little vacation but he gets taken out of the he gets taken out of TV time but he probably will be back and probably better than ever. They're probably just gonna repackage him a little, maybe to probably give give him a push for the big title or the, the big run as they call it. Who knows? We'll just have to wait and see. So that that storyline is set for John Cena versus Kane at the Royal Rumble. Other major things that stood out: Jericho finally talked. Yes, Chris Jericho at or his new found internet name as the IWC likes to call it for those you know if you don't know what IWC stands for it's called the internet wrestling community Jared Troll actually spoke he came out the stage was the ring was already set up for the Jericho highlight reel and Jericho came out and was was telling the crowd to to be quiet he was like shh be quiet be quiet be quiet shh and then he was like, he was like, you know what, you know what, you know what? Wait one second, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. He goes and gets the T-shirt gun, the gun that you, you know, fire T-shirts out to the crowd. He doesn't fire it because you know Jericho is is trolling once again. He doesn't fire it, and then he goes, you know, he goes shh, shh, shh and he points to the to the Jericho on three times. He goes, shh, watch this. And basically, some to sum it up, it was basically his career from 1999. Till now with the WWE showing how he really is a, a heel and his his first sentence and last of the night was after the Royal Rumble the world will be over as you know it I'm um, excuse me not that it's the end of the world as we know it that's what he said sorry so maybe he's gonna win the Royal Rumble Maybe he's talking about CM Punk because as at the time now CM Punk is calling himself quote unquote the best in the world. So we'll have to wait and see about that as well. Moving on to TNA. Yeah, that long pause was really necessary for TNA. I don't understand. Oh, I think I could just do a whole show about how wrong TNA does things. TNA, why are you so backwards? Backwards statement number one. The week before, you have Mickey James go against Madison Rain. 
in a steel cage match and Mickey James wins. Mind you, Madison Rain is one half of the tag team D knockout divas with the knockout champion Gail Kim. So you have the week before, you have her go, and by the way, last week that was the best match on the card. So the best match on the card was the steel cage match. You have her go in a steel cage match against Madison Rain. She beats Madison Rain in a steel cage match. I want to put the emphasis on the steel cage part. In a steel cage match. But next week, you have Velvet Sky, who I haven't seen in like two months. Velvet Sky versus Tamina and Mickey James again and you did I mean excuse me not Tamina Tara and Mickey James again and that's the match for the number one contendership and you have Mickey James lose I'm confused I'm confused here at your logic TNA so in other words TNA writers think that a triple threat match is more of a serious match than a steel cage match. If that was the case, you just should have did it the other way around. You should have just have the winner of the triple threat match go into the steel cage match, and then the winner of the steel cage match is the number one contender. But I guess you couldn't do that because that would make the knockout tag team chance fight each other if you would have Madison Rain win. But it's okay to do predictable losses because WWE does it all the time. But oh, I forget, you're not trying to be WWE. But the fact that you're not trying to be WWE, but trying to be WWE, trying to be better at WWE at the same time, it fails. Because your logic doesn't make any sense to me. But other TNA news. The, the whole thing with, with Magus, who he basically came out of nowhere. Magus, Samoa Joe, with uh, Crimson and the blueprint Mac Morgan. I don't know where that's going. Basically, the, their tag team division is just like WWE's. It only has four people. So I don't I don't see it. At least it's, it's at least the storyline is going to be interesting. Um, it's unpredictable. This I just have to wait and see about that. At least it's interesting. I'll, I'll I'll you know, I'll just turn in to watch that now. Cuz the whole thing with the and going into Eric, the whole thing with Eric Young is old old DB things. Just there is with the uh, winter and can't even remember the other girl's name. It's, it's just give me one second to this team. It's just fucking me up here. Hold on. Oh man. But yeah, just TNA. The whole thing with Eric Young in the winter and the other broad, who I can't remember his name anymore, is her name has slipped my mind. That's just it's. Uh, just, Eric Young is just better by himself. Just leave that alone. In my opinion, Eric Young is better off funny by himself. He doesn't need anybody. Other TNA news at the main event scene. Just Sting, just make the match as a triple threat match already. It doesn't need to be extended. The storyline doesn't need to be extended anymore. All, all three of them on the poster. We know it's going to be a triple threat. Just make the just make the triple threat announcement already. Or can you please just get to that, please? Because all the, the table match was entertaining, but now we see small a little conflict between Rude and Ray. Because as Ray slipped up, he's like, "Oh, you won't be TNA champion now for long." And then Rude was like, "What did you say?" And then he goes, "Nothing." That's just it's it's we're gonna bu Bubba is gonna turn on on Rude sooner or later. I'm more interested in the Christopher Daniels, Kat Kazarian, and AJ Styles storyline due to the fact that I have no idea what the hell is going on and it looks interesting. And I I want to see this match, Kazarian versus AJ Styles, only because I know it'll probably be a great match because those are one of the two top performers on TNA and helped put TNA back on the map in the early 2000s back when it was good. So, I'm interested in looking towards that. On to the SmackDown side of things. Back to WWE. Daniel Bryan slowly fitting into the heel role. He actually got boos when he came out. And hearable boos. 
And the reason why I say hero boo is just due to the fact that SmackDown is taped. WWE producers usually edit out the boos, but the fact that even with the edit, you can still hear the boos, which means they were even booing louder. But I like the fact that he's actually fitting in the heel role, you know, applying things behind people's back. And I really enjoy that. He's, he's really getting the hang of his heel role. And other news on SmackDown, the Honcho and Ted DiBiase feud, is, I'm really unliking it. It's like the undercard feud of the wrestling industry. I mean, well, for the WWE, it was like, well, it's there and it's entertaining, but it's good. It, it has just the right amount of time show on the card. It doesn't take up that much time. doesn't take over too much time. It gives both gives both superstars something to do every week. I actually, I'm actually enjoying it. Cody Rhodes is the man, and we're just going to leave it at that. We're going to move on because another good match against Justin Gabriel and uh, Cody Rhodes. I like it. Like I said before, I like it when heels win clean, and Cody's the man. Another thing: the mat, the final, the main event match between Mark Henry and Big Show wasn't supposed to end like that because of. Well, I, I enjoyed the fact that. Uh, Daniel Bryan came out and beat it with the chair, and then that's how it ended with uh, Bryan crawling away and Cole saying, oh, that might be, you know, this is the last time we might see him as champion. But the match ended in the count out. So with this, I'm going to go into the unscripted part of the WWE. Okay, during that match, Mark Henry threw a punch and he didn't have his firm, he didn't have his feet um, stable properly. So he hyperstended his knee. Meaning it's a small chance that Mark Henry is going to win at Royal Rumble because, yeah, he's hurt. So he's just probably going to tough it out and just go through the match. Other things on the unscripted side, if you guys noticed this during this past tapings of SmackDown, um, DiBiase had a cast over his wrist. And DiBiase hurt, broke his hand in a live event show. That's why he had the cast on his hand. In other unscripted news, David Otunga is a lawyer in real life. Yes, he plays a lawyer on television during, you know, being the boss's right hand man and all. A, a John Laronitis, that is. But he actually is a lawyer in real life. He sexually went to court to defend this guy who got cheated out of, he got rightfully, fi wrongfully fired from his job and couldn't get um couldn't get unemployment and he actually did he actually did the case and he won the best part about it is he did it for free so not only is he good at his job he knows that WWE is paying enough that he doesn't do case, he didn't do that case for money he actually did it for free and and overall he won so that's good news very interested in that but that's all the time I had for uh, Drama Script of Saturdays for this week. Uh, I'm Game Fiend Field World Games. Remember, this is the only wrestling talk show that gives you gameplay and what's going the inside news of what's going on in and outside of WWE TNA. And I'm Game Fiend Field World Games, guys, and I'm out of here. Later. Peace.